Joining us from Washington, D.C., Leanne Caldwell, political reporter for CBSNews.com. Leanne, good morning to you. Good morning, Terrell. The president saying that he is moderately optimistic. The reality, though, is that we're 24 hours away from reaching this fiscal cliff. Is there anything that can really be done in that period of time? Yeah, we are definitely headed toward the fiscal cliff in the economy, and really people's pocketbooks are hanging off this cliff. There's not a lot of time left. Uh, set negotiators are still working. They're trying to come up with a deal, but it's going to be very difficult. There's some major sticking points that remain, and um, there has been no resolution yet. Is it possible, Leanne, for both the House and the Senate to maybe pass an agreement at some point today? There is. There's always time. We've seen this play before, actually. It happened in uh, a couple times in the past couple of years around a government uh, shutdown and also the debt ceiling debate. And so there is time. And really, if they do not meet the fiscal cliff deadline, which is midnight tonight, uh, they could potentially pass things that, um, that go into effect retroactively. But it's just not a good thing for the economy. It's not a good thing for public perception. And it's not a good thing for Washington. Last night, the Senate holding that rare session. Was there any progress out of those debates and those meetings? It's hard to say. They're talking, so that's progress. But the, there's some key sticking points. Uh, the Democrats and the president uh, want tax rates to go up for those making more than $250,000 a year. They want an extension of unemployment insurance for 2 million people who will lose their benefits come tomorrow if nothing is passed. And the Republicans, meanwhile, they, they're uncomfortable with both of those things. Um, they don't want to raise taxes, and the unemployment insurance extension is, ex is expensive. And there's one thing that's being ignored in this, uh, in this fiscal cliff uh, last-minute discussions, and that is uh, the sequester. It's a series of automatic budget cuts that are set to go into effect. They're federal budget cuts that will hit defense and non-defense programs, and the Republicans want something done about that, too. The Republicans actually submitted the latest fiscal cliff offer. That was on Saturday. Democrats said they'd get back to them on Sunday. That never happened. So where are we in negotiations now? They're, they're still talking. Uh, now Vice President Biden has come into the discussions. Uh, he's talking with the leader, the Republican leader in the Senate. Uh, the Democratic leader in the Senate is still involved as well. And um, so everyone's talking, but there has been nothing concrete and there is no vote planned. Leanne, it's being said that this fiscal cliff isn't as cataclysmic as it sounds. It's not so much a cliff but it's more like a steep hill. But if we're talking about taxes and the impact of taxes on the average American, when can the average American expect to feel the impacts of the fiscal cliff if we go over it? Well, that's just the thing. I mean, things can be done retroactively. They can postpone things, parts of this fiscal cliff, but people's paychecks will immediately be smaller. They could get the money back eventually. But what it does is it leaves uncertainty. If Congress can't do something when there's a massive deadline, why should the American people trust and, and think that Congress can do something a few weeks later or a few days later? And so people, it's just, it's just a major uncertainty that they're leaving with the American people if they don't do anything. And the clock is ticking for sure at this point. Leanne Caldwell, political reporter for CBSNews.com. Leanne, thank you so much. Thank you, Trell.